here you can see a male false widow entering the web of a large female false widow, Steatoda nobilis. These are the largest of the two, or the largest of the two false widow species that are found in Ireland so far. And she's in the web at the back. She's very large compared to him. He's very long legs though. Now he's trying to communicate with her his intentions. He's strumming the web. And now is he going... This could be a fatal move for him. Sometimes it results in death. Will he safely get into the web or will she kill him? She's coming out. See, she's much, much larger than he is. You see, she's quite a large spider. He's trying to communicate. She may have already mated. If that has happened, then she will probably kill him. Now, he's a large male. He may have mated before. Now he's. He has to not only mate with her, he has to get back out of that web. Oh, she bit him. I knocked him out of the web. Now, he may not survive that. He may have actually not been bitten, but she tried to bite him. And that's why he... But no, he's not giving up. Oh, he's going to try again. And I have a feeling it's going to head pretty badly for him. He's going really deep into the web now, so he may not be coming back because she bit him already. He's intent on mating, on trying to mate anyway, so it'll be interesting to see. False widows are very like true widow spiders, and uh, they have the same sort of relationship to males. They do survive, but not always, not often. I don't think he's going to be coming back. He is successfully making them. Interesting. But, uh, and now he's going to try and leave. Will he succeed? Yeah, he's actually leaving. It's very interesting. But, he'll only have a few moments grace to safely get back out of the web if he has made it. There seems to be hormones that are carried into the female which uh, cause her to kind of pause. I suppose a number of males have to actually succeed in mating. If they don't, uh, the successful genes are passed on. His charisma. But, uh, oh, he is successfully mating. We shall see. Uh, house spiders aren't dangerous to human beings, but they're very large, and these are the spiders that everybody's afraid of. And this one is feeding on a large crane fly, and this is a male house spider. And he's pretty big, as you can see. Like <laughs> And now, they're very fast runners and the males have long, very long legs proportional to their bodies, which is what makes them scary. They're the fastest running spider. But you don't have to worry about them hurting people because they don't. This is a garden spider also known as a cross spider because of the white cross pattern on its back. This is a pretty large female. Almost as large as they can get. They can get a bit bigger. And she has prey. Seems to be a fly. The web is quite large. It's a standard or classic spider web. And these are the ones that make the biggest webs in Ireland. Uh, well, the biggest classic spider web. There are spiders which make much longer webs, like runways. 
but they're running spiders. These are climbing spiders. And she'll go off up somewhere like up here and then run out and grab prey that gets into her web. It's a bit difficult to see the web, but you can see quite clearly what the spider is about. Hanging in me there. Very handsome species, native to Ireland, very common, especially in autumn. So, no need to be afraid of these. They don't generally come into people's houses unless somebody walks through a web and they get onto the clothes, but they wouldn't walk in. The male is a lot smaller with longer legs, but he lives kind of like the female. He walks around and he usually dies when he mates. So the female will eat him. Garden spiders can be darker than this. This is one of the brighter ones, almost approaching yellow. Uh, it's almost as though somebody made a very fancy cushion. <laughs> that's its abdomen. And that's where it houses all the chemicals required for making silk. And every day it builds a very large web, uh, which is about a meter wide, meter in diameter because it is sort of circular. Uh, there are, I wish, there are other garden spiders that are more red or brown coloured, but the white cross on the back is usually the giveaway. The easiest way of recognising them, and the stripy legs. They're very beautiful spider, probably the most beautiful you'll see at this time of the year. And the fact that they're a little bit large as well. That's my thumb. This for scale, and I struck the web accidentally. Here you can see the window lace weaver on her web, and walking alongside the house. See the web is very narrow. It's just basically leaning against the edge of the house there, and the spider's climbing in now out of the way. You can see it's very very light lace, it's a very nice web, but it's not, it's just wide enough to act as a platform. There's the spider. She's pulled herself into a little gap there between the boards of the under the eaves. And see she's getting away from the light now, out of the way. She doesn't like light. And here you can see a house spider. A smallish house spider, dead in the web of a long-bodied cellar spider, which is also known as a rafter spider. Now, if you want to get rid of spiders, uh, this one here is a cannibal, and it eats these ones, and it eats false widows. So it's uh, they're harmless to humans. Uh, you find them in the Middle East; they live in caves. And they are the ones that make the huge webs uh, that hang down out of the ceilings like curtains that you see in all the adventure movies. And uh, normally in the Middle East they live in caves. They've been spreading across Europe, but for some reason they're really only found on the eastern seaboard of Ireland. But they are found in the UK, but once again for some strange reason, mainly on the eastern seaboard. And uh, it's hard to know why. Uh, it could be something to do with geology or something like that, or maybe it's something to do with the kind of prey they find. But uh, these spiders tend to be, they, they make, they're a bit of a nuisance in that they make uh, webs that are kind of get everywhere, but they are pretty unassuming nocturnal creatures mostly. They need to be indoors, so they don't like to be outdoors. Uh, whereas you will find house spiders like this one outdoors, but of course uh, the house spider um, as big as it is, it's no match for this little guy here. What this little one does is it fire. well it's not that little as you can see, it has long legs but the body isn't very big. But what it does is it fires its body and bites a leg of a bigger spider and then grabs the spider before it hits the ground. They're very toxic. And this house spider has only just been caught, it hasn't even been wrapped up yet as you can see. So it's a male house spider, you can see by the clubbed, uh, uh, ch uh, the, the clubbed palps. 
Anyhow, that's just an example. This spider was only caught a moment ago. Here's a different kind of spider. Funny little thing called a zebra jumping spider. And it's small. You can actually see this is the spider here. Moving just at the edge of this shadow. See it's spinning around. It's following the shadow now. They have large eyes and they'll actually look at you if you get too close. You raise their eyes up and this one might look at the camera. But they don't make webs, they just run along and they jump onto their prey on walls, sunny walls. Uh, you will rarely ever see them. Uh, little. They're always there but you rarely ever notice them. That's the real trick with these spiders. And they're very well camouflaged. They're called zebra jumping spiders because of the stripes. Black and white stripes on the back. There's two different species common in Ireland and in the UK and Britain. Fascinating little creature hunting by stealth. Uh, maybe she'll look up. No. Next to the missing sector orb weaver, the spider that's mostly confused with the false widow, is this one, which is known as the window spider or window sill spider or the window lace weaver, uh, Amorobius similis. There's a very similar species called Amorobius fenestralis, but ironically it doesn't actually live near windows, despite the, having the fenestralis in the name. You see, she's quite a chunky spider. This is a female. You can see her fangs are quite large, not gigantic. They're very slow moving usually, and they don't make a web, a proper web as such. They make a sort of a, a little kind of knitted area, like lace, and it's usually in a corner. But these spiders walk around at night, and they just catch whatever prey they can. Uh, they're very common, they do wander into houses, but usually you'll find them outside the house, but they do wander into houses occasionally. Uh, they're not, as I say, they're very slow moving, so they're not quite as scary as other spiders. There are stories that they're very poisonous to dogs, but I don't know about that. I've never been bitten by one, and uh, I don't intend to be anytime soon. Uh, so I don't know if they do bite. Uh, I'm not sure how a dog would really be bitten by one, because they don't see each other very much. I mean, these guys tend to be up off the ground. They do sometimes build retreats under timber. There's a larger related species called Amorobius ferox. Uh, I've never been bitten by one of those and I have handled them any time and they can be very large and could easily bite but uh, once again I've never experienced any aggression despite the name ferox which means ferocious. Here we have a Sayatoda nobilis false widow in a very unusual place which is on the ground. This one having fallen off the side of a house. When they land on the ground they tend to pull themselves into a tight ball. Uh, they're not very good at walking on the ground. These, this is a female. And uh, the male of Steatoda grossa is very good at walking on the ground but female isn't good in that species either. Uh, so here you can see one just hunched into a ball afraid to move. Um, so you don't really see them wandering around much on foot. Uh, that's more something uh, house spiders and things like that do. But uh, as you can see it's quite a quiet little creature. Showing absolutely no no interest in doing anything other than hiding its face. Uh, with its legs there. But if I took the light away it would. Here you can see Sayatolda Noblis False Widow hanging upside down at the corner outside a window. She's not as, not even a very big one. Whoa, I have to watch. I don't get nipped by accidentally putting my hand in the web. It's more likely to be the camera up there. You can see there. If they see something, they will actually run out and try and get it. But they're always upside down. Always. Unless they're on the ground or walking on a wall. There you can see. 
Look at the mark. This one has the classic pattern on her back. It's almost like a horseshoe with the, the gap in the middle whited out. And her webs are very strong. Quite handsome species. Here's another in front of a window. And she's decided oh, I might be a threat. Uh, here's another false widow, Stetoda grossa. And if I can get the light right on her, you can see this one is more black. See, a lot of them, they have very black bodies. They can be like a black current, shiny like a black current. This one, her body, her abdomen isn't as large as they get. It looks like she's actually just uh, had young. So, and you see the eyes, two eyes there at the front. They have more than two eyes, of course, but two eyes are very shiny. And they glow off the light of the torch. And you have to be careful when you get too close because sometimes they can run out and nip you, thinking you're prey. If you happen to hit a trip wire. Because as you notice the web is a, a mess, kind of a tangle, hence the name tangle web spiders. And yet again, she's hanging upside down. 